are listening to the international hit show, The Baby Names Podcast. And here are your hosts, the Moss Sisters. I'm Jennifer Moss. And I'm Mallory Moss. And we're the founders of babynames.com. And we're sisters too. We are sisters. Hooray. So we always start out the show with interesting names we found in the past couple of weeks. And this week I'm drawing from the news. For the first time ever, a man ran a marathon in under two hours. Ooh. One hour 59 minutes and 40 seconds to be exact. It was a 42.2 kilometer route in Vienna, Austria, and his name is Eliud Kipchoge. He is from Kenya. Eliud, E-L-I-U-D, is a Hebrew name originally from the Greek, and it's also a biblical name in the book of Matthew. Eliud was named as an ancestor of Jesus. It's a fairly popular name in Kenya and means God is great. So congratulations to Eliud Kipchoge. Wow, congrats, Eliud. My mile is more like a fast three days with a car for backup. (laughs) As far as my names this time, I spent a lot of time in airports. Names of little kids I heard being yelled at by their parents to come closer included Karsten, which I believe would be Mm C-A-R-S-T-O-N, Janny, J-A-N-N-Y, I don't know, I'm not sure how to spell it or if it was a diminutive of Jan, and Priscilla. I don't know how I feel about Priscilla, but more or less, I think Janny is my favorite of the bunch. I like Priscilla, but they tend to um, call... Priscilla's prissy, which I don't like right. <laughs> because that has connotations to it. It's an expectation name, yeah. Yeah, definitely. She's going to be prissy and little or whatever. So, hark, dear my York, me believeth it is time for Shakespeare names. What dost thou thinkest? Alas, poor Jeneth, I knew him for a show. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. So I love Shakespeare names, and they're all so romantic and fun. I probably would have named Miranda Juliet, if not for the fact that Miranda was my mother-in-law's maiden name. But that worked out well, because it was also a Shakespeare name. Um, I've been quite a fan of the Bard since high school. And a little background, the works of William Shakespeare were written between the years of 1590 and 1613 and published between 1594 and 1623. Hmm, isn't there a controversy whether Shakespeare really wrote the works attributed to him? Yes, which was kind of the premise of the movie Shakespeare in Love. But the real background is that when the works became popular years after they were written and published, the historians tried to figure out who this guy was. So they went back to the population records, and the only William Shakespeare they found that lived during that time was a tradesman from Stratford-upon-Avon. So they were just automatically attributed to him. But now there is a consensus that William Shakespeare was most likely a pseudonym or a pen name to hide the author's real identity. For one, the William Shakespeare from Stratford was not educated to the point where he would have had the vocabulary or the writing skills to have created any of these works. Of course, the city of Stratford-upon-Avon in the UK gets so many tourists and has made such a business out of old will that they will never entertain the thought of anyone but their William Shakespeare being the actual bard. In fact, Act, they have dubbed those who have other theories as anti Stratfordians. So, who do they think it is? Christopher Marlowe, like in the movie? Well, yes, the most popular theory is Christopher Marlowe because he was another poet and playwright contemporary to Will. Another one is Sir Francis Bacon because he was an essayist and scientist, so he would have had the intelligence and the writing skills. William Stanley, the sixth Earl of Derby, had his own theater company and he had the same initials, so he's another contender. 
Uh, but my money is on Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. He was basically a really close BFF to Queen Elizabeth I, and he had unlimited access to the court's inner workings. And de Vere was also, ta-da, the court poet. Hmm. People who believe in this theory say there are little hints in the plays and his works that only a courtier would have known about and made fun of, a courtier being someone around the court or in the court. There's also a movie out about this theory. It's uh, called Anonymous. Hmm. Okay, very cool. So let's talk about the names. Shakespeare wrote plays based on real people, some were complete fiction, and he also wrote verse and poetry. Let's talk about his most famous couple, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and the word romance are related, not surprising. In fact, it's still used as a synonym for someone who is a romancer or always on the make. Yeah. Before it meant love and adventure, romance, R-O-M-A-N-Z, referred specifically to the old French language used by the regular folks. So back in early France, novels were either written in Latin, which was for the more educated, or in Romance, the language of the regular people. The romance novels were like early type of pulp fiction and mostly, ta-da, romances and tales of knights and medieval adventure. So, so that's how the term romance morphed from being a language to being about love. The name Juliet is from the old Latin Julius. All of the jewel names mean young, youthful, and some say downy, which means youthful for like birds. The ET ending was used for girls, not yet women, so that was to emphasize her innocence and young age. Many people don't realize this, but Juliet in the play is 14 years old. 14! Yeah, the story probably wouldn't fly nowadays. Actress Olivia Hussey was actually 15 when she played Juliet in the 68 Zeffirelli film, so that was close. That's a beautiful film, by the way, and still holds up. Yeah, it is. Claire Danes was 17 by the 1996 version with Leonardo DiCaprio. I want to go back and watch the Leonardo Claire Danes version. I remember that being kooky and fun. Yeah, definitely. It's different and Mm -hmm. very unusual, but I remember really enjoying it and finding that it was accessible. The language and the way they interpreted the poetry was very accessible to anyone watching. Right. They talk a lot about names in Romeo and Juliet with the famous line, what's in a name? Yeah, so Jules brings it up first in the balcony scene. She says famously, Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. So first I have to point out that wherefore does not mean where. Wherefore means why. So she's saying, why are you Romeo Montague? Your name belongs to the only family that my family hates. Then she asks him to deny his father, or basically his father's name, and refuse his family name because that's the only way they would ever be able to be together. Then she says, If thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. So if you don't want to give up your name, then for love, I will give up mine. Exactly. Now she's just ruminating. She doesn't know that Romeo is hanging out in the bushes and watching her at this point. So she goes on to say that his name is not her enemy and he is not his family. He's his own man. A name is not like an arm or a hand or a foot or any other physical part of a man. Then she says the famous line, go ahead and take it. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Yes, which is a concept that we still talk about, especially when others don't like your name choices. So my advice is to just stop talking about the name until the baby's born, especially for those grandparents, because once they see the baby, they'll warm up to its name because it's all about the person and not the name anymore. Yep. And if you hear an unusual name, you might react to it. But then when you get to know the person, it doesn't seem too unusual anymore. 
Yeah, like Oprah or Barack Obama or even Madonna. I thought her name was strange at first. And now, well, she's Madonna. So back to the scene. Romeo can't take it anymore and shouts out to her, Call me but love and I'll be new baptized. Which means all you got to do is call me love, baby. No other names needed. (laughs) And she's like, what kind of man are you to hang out there and stalk me in the bushes, weirdo? And then he doesn't even address that. He changes the subject and he continues with all the name business and reassures her by saying, by a name, I know not how to tell you who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it's an enemy to thee. Had I written it, I would tear the word. So. So dramatic. Yeah, and then he later admits, though, that he loves hearing his first name on her lips, like softest music to attending ears. So anyway, that's Romeo, Juliet, and all their name business. Let's talk about some other cool names from that play. When the play opens, Romeo is talking about how in love he is with Rosaline, R-O-S-A-L-I-N-E, who is actually Juliet's cousin. He has a history of going for those forbidden women. So Rosaline is a combination of Rose and Linda, which means beautiful, not to be confused with Rosalind, R-O-S-A-L-I-N-D, or Rosalind, the main character from As You Like It. Or Rosencrantz from Hamlet. Yep. So other characters include Mercutio and Benvolio, who are Romeo's pals. Benvolio is actually his cousin who tries to keep the peace, hence the name, which means goodwill. Yeah, old Bill definitely took definitions into account in his character naming. And, you know, I'd like to take a minute here to say J.K. Rawlings also does that. Yeah. And I wonder if she got that convention from good old Bill. And George R.R. R. Martin as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, well, anyway, Tybalt is Juliet's cousin who gets into the big fight with Romeo's guys. Tybalt means bold person, so that's appropriate, too. Aeschylus is the prince of Verona, where the play is set, and Paris is his pal or relative. Now, there are friars Lawrence and John, and the servants are all named as well. Balthazar, I love that name, Samson, Gregory, and Peter. Now, their parents are not named, but the nurse's name, according to Wikipedia, is Angelica. Oh, okay, Angelica. That's funny because she's everything but Angelica. She's a dirty old woman, if anyone ever read her stuff correctly. (laughs) Um, And Balthazar reminds me of Balthazar Getty, an actor who we haven't really seen in a while. Mm. Um, Let's talk about Shakespeare works with names in the title now. Sounds good. So a lot of the historical works based on real people have names in the title, like King John, Henry the Sixth, Richard the Second and Third, Julius Caesar, Henry the Fourth, Henry the Fifth, Antony and Cleopatra, Coriolanus, Henry the Eighth, and one of my favorites, Macbeth. Okay, I've never heard of Coriolanus, the name or the play. (laughs) Um, Anyway, Shakespearean fictional characters or those based in mythology are Venus and Adonis, Titus Andronicus, the rape of Lucretia. Lucrece. It's Lucrece? It's based on the name Lucretia. Okay. Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Troilus and Cressida, Othello, Timon of Athens. Yeah. Timon of Athens. King Lear, Pericles, Cymbeline, and Cardenio. I like Cymbeline. That's a pretty name. Mm -hmm. Who was Lacresse? I never read that one. It's an old Roman story, even though I didn't know how to pronounce the name five (laughs) seconds ago. Not verified by fact or fiction. The story goes that Tarquin, or Tarquin, an Etruscan prince, raped Lucretia. Now it says Lucretia, who was of a noble Roman family. The Etruscans were separate from the Romans in the part of Italy that is now around Tuscany. There was an uprising by the noble families of Rome and apparently overturned the monarchy to begin the new government as a republic. This was all set off by the rape. It ends with Lucrece or Lucretia killing herself with a knife. Wow. 
So you have to understand that back then, people had no internet, no television, movies, or even radio. So entertainment consisted of books, music, and plays. They had to be fantastic and dramatic and comedic to keep people interested. They were also a social scene where you'd meet up and catch up with friends. And the writers needed you to come back after the intermission, so they created these really dramatic cliffhangers at the end of each act. Kind of like they do today at the end of episodes. Yeah, okay. Well, going back to Timon of Athens, I don't know who that is, but I do know that Timon is a character in The Lion King, of course, Mm -hmm. which was based on Hamlet. Right. So that's cool that they used a real Shakespeare name in that. Yeah, I just put that together, too. Timon means to honor or hold in high esteem. The meerkat character in Lion King was originally played by Nathan Lane in the 1994 film and Billy Eichner in the new version. And I need to see that because I haven't seen it yet. So let's talk about some other cool remakes as they apply to names. Taming of the Shrew was reworked into the musical Kiss Me Kate. The original play had sisters Katharina and Bianca, hence the name Kate and Kiss Me Kate. Petruchio is the man who's hired to, quote, tame her. P.U. I know. The story was then remade into the 1999 film 10 Things I Hate About You, which is a play on the sound of Taming of the Shrew. 10 Things stars Julia Stiles as Katarina or Kat Stratford. See what they did there. Mm -hmm. And Heath Ledger as Patrick Verona. Haha. And they went to Padua High School. Padua being where the original Taming of the Shrew was set. And if you don't know what a shrew is, it's the name for an out-of-control or angry woman. Basically what we call a biatch today. (laughs) The story is incredibly misogynistic as the man has to tame her to be a proper woman and good wife. Yeah. And she can't find a husband because she's so stubborn and opinionated and, quote, wild. Julia Stiles also starred in the teen version of Othello called O in 2001, Ten Things did so well they decided to continue the trend, but O just didn't make it as big. Less than half the box office of Ten Things. In O, Othello is renamed Odin. Desdemona, or Julia, becomes Desi. And Diago becomes Hugo, played by Josh Hartnett. I mean, I like that film too, but... Of course, it's because of my love of Shakespeare. And in O, Martin Sheen plays the coach named Duke Goulding, who is based on the character of the Duke of Venice. Now, the name Othello, contrary to other websites, really has no known meaning. It could be a diminutive of the name Otho, which was an ancient Roman nickname, but that has no meaning either and was considered to be created for the play. Now, another one of my absolute mon favorite plays is Macbeth. And that has so many video film productions, but not sure if it's actually been modernized. I did once see a Kabuki version of it, though, on stage, and that was interesting. Kabuki Macbeth? Yes. It was kind of fascinating. So Macbeth was a Scottish character, and it's based in Scotland. In the play, he's never given any other name. The story is based on, although fictionalized, a real Scottish king named Macbeth Mac Finlach. Macbeth means son of life in Gaelic. Lady Macbeth is never named in the play, but the real King Macbeth's wife was a woman named Gruach. (laughs) <laughs> G-R-U-O-C-H. What a name. Oh, yeah, that kind of fits. Groach. Groach. The three witches who open the show and deliver prophecies to Macbeth are fiction. Oh, good to know. But- <laughs> good to know that the witches aren't real. <laughs> but they were based in North mythology of the three weird women, of or Norns, named Weird, W-Y-R-D, Schooled, and Verdandi, V-E-R-D-A-N-D-I. Yeah, Verdandi is pretty, but don't go naming your kid weird. No. <laughs> That's the name of the word weird, W-E-I-R-D, is based on, although its original meaning was more like fate or fateful. Yeah. Other cool names from Macbeth are Macduff, Duncan, Malcolm, mm. both great names. Mal. Lennox, Ross, Menteth, 
Angus Kathness, probably pronounced like Katniss Everdeen, mm. C A T H N E S S, Fleance, C word, Satan, S E Y T O N, and Banquo the Ghost. In this age, they often went by their surnames, or if they ruled any land, then their nickname would be the name of the land, like the Duke of Sussex, which Harry is now, would be called Sussex as a nickname. And although we can't get to every Shakespeare name, we should wrap up with Hamlet. Sure. And there are actually not that many named characters in Hamlet, believe it or not. Hmm. Hamlet, obviously, means little town. So that was a place name or name based on a place. His Mm -hmm. dad, Claudius, is the king of Denmark and his mom, Gertrude, the queen of Denmark. Nice. These queens actually got names. Lucianus is the nephew to the king and Ham's cousin. Horatio is Hamlet's pal. Fortinbras was the prince of Norway. Polonius was the lord chamberlain and Polonius's son was named Aertes. These are all sounding very Greek. Yeah, they are. Or Latin. Mm -hmm. Aertes is A-E-R-T-E-S. Some other names are Voltimond. So that, you know who that sounds like. Voltimort. Cornelius, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern. Osric. Those were all guys of the court. And then the police officers were Marcellus and Bernardo. And then there's a soldier named Francisco. And that's all there is. Wow, that's it? Yeah. Yeah, that is a lot of Latin names for a place set in Denmark. I must point out that Ophelia is currently number 343 on the U.S. Social Security charts and rising fast. Probably because it's close to Olivia, which has been super popular. Yeah, in 2015, it debuted at 979, and in three years, it's jumped up to 343, as you said. I predict it will make the top 100 in the next couple of years. But no Hamlet? No Hamlet. Now, Miranda was most popular in the U.S. in 1995, where it was number 57, but has since dropped in popularity and is now at 367. As far as Shakespeare names go, Miranda is from The Tempest where she and Ariel are daughters of Prospero, the Duke of Milan. Speaking of Ariel, that name appears on both sides of the 2018 charts, 155 for girls and 585 for boys. Wow. Eleanor and Amelia, with an E, are also super popular names that were Shakespeare names, and Octavia is definitely a pretty name, like Octavia Spencer. Yeah. Yeah. George and Henry are both king names that are on the charts. Isabella comes from Measure for Measure. Jessica is Shylock's daughter in The Merchant of Venice. And it's rumored that Shakespeare actually invented that name. It didn't appear in print prior to the bard, but it's believed he based it on the Hebrew name Iska, I-S-C-A-H, meaning to behold. Hmm. Now, another name he's purported to have invented is Miranda, from the Latin Mirandus, meaning behold or admirable. Also, the name Imogen, I-M-O-G-E-N, a popular name in the UK, from Cymbeline, was a new name, and it might have just been a misprinting or a misspelling of Inogen, I-N-N-O-G-E-N, which was a name in that time. Well, let's go over the Shakespeare names you should not use for your baby. Puck is one of them from Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> Definitely. Mucius from oh, Titus yuck. Andronicus. Oh, Titus is like Titus Welliver from the Bosch series. Yeah. I'm a fan of that one. The show, but maybe not the name. I'm not a fan of Titus either. It sounds kind of like tetanus, like the shot. It's the name of a comedian too, isn't it? Oh, that's his last name. Christopher Titus. Um, it also kind of sounds like tight ass. <laughs> and speaking mm. of asses, Pinch from the Comedy of Errors. Don't use that name. Phrynia or Phrynia and Timandra are prostitutes in Timon of Athens. Pistol is a character in several plays. Don't name your baby Pistol, please. Let's see. And Speed from Two Gentlemen of Verona. Don't name your baby Speed. No. Also, Simple and Slender from The Merry Wives of Windsor. So some of his names were meant to be jokes, like Mother Pratt 
who is also from the Merry Wives of Windsor. A prat is a trick, but it's also the slang for booty. Shakespeare had many double entendres in his works, and many of them very off-color, so I won't go into the other names that were meant to be body parts. Um, the last one I can think of is Abhorson, A-B-H-O-R-S-O-N, who was an executioner in Measure for Measure. Do you have a favorite Shakespeare name that we didn't cover? Did you give your baby a Shakespeare name, either intentionally or unintentionally? If so, write us. We want to know. Email podcast at babynames.com. That goes directly to me and Jennifer. And now it's time for Celebrity Baby News. <laughs> The Hill star and entrepreneur Lauren Conrad has welcomed her second child with husband William Tell. It's another boy. She revealed on Instagram that they have named their son Charlie Wolf. Little Charlie will join big brother Liam James, who is two. I don't like the cadence of that Charlie Wolf Tell. Charlie Wolf Tell. I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like you're doing military code. Yeah, it does. Charlie, Wolf, Tell. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. And there's a new baby girl for Backstreet Boy, Nick Carter, and his wife, Lauren Kit Carter. Nick and Lauren chose an Irish name for their baby, Saoirse, S-A-O-I-R-S-E, and middle name Rain, R-E-I-G-N. The name... Saoirse means freedom and has become much more popular due to actress Saoirse Ronan. Ronan is also a name climbing the charts. Yeah, both names are becoming popular. Actor and Dancing with the Stars contestant James Vanderbeek made a special announcement on the show that he and his wife Kimberly are expecting their sixth child. James and Kimberly married in 2010 and have since welcomed five children so far, four daughters and one son. Hmm. Olivia is nine, Joshua seven, Annabelle Leah five, Amelia with an E, three, and Gwendolyn, born just last year. Those are some pretty traditional names. Yeah, they are. That's a lot of babies. Lots of babies under nine. (laughs) Power couple Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds have given birth to their third child together, but have been keeping everything very hush-hush. The actors are infamously private about their family life. Blake only posted one pregnancy photo on her Instagram page. The baby will join two older sisters, James, who is four, and Inez, who is two. No news on the gender or the name of Baby Lively Reynolds. 44-year-old singer Natalie Imbruglia has had her baby this week, who was conceived via IVF. She revealed to the world that his name is Max Valentine Imbruglia. She will be raising the child as a single mom. And congratulations to Natalie and Max. Thanks to Kate Fan for being our amazing celebrity baby blogger. She's got an October roundup of who's all expecting and do. So head on over to our celebrity baby blog to catch up. Go to babynames.com and click celebrities in the menu. And now it's the segment where we take questions from you, our listeners. Here's the first one. Hi, Mallory and Jennifer. We're expecting our third, and we're at a loss for names. We have Cameron Rose and Dylan Lane, and would like to have another name for each gender that ends with N. We don't know the gender yet. Caitlin and Cohen have been on my mind, just to give you an idea. Any suggestions are welcome. Thank you, Jessica. Well, okay, what about something that sounds like it ends in N but doesn't, like Crane? The names being suggested are pretty popular by mom here, though, so I would think something more common like Benjamin would be preferable. Another N name that is definitely not popular but might make a comeback includes Fawn, F-A-W-N. Oh, I like Fawn. You mentioned Karsten as one of your airport kids, so that's interesting and a nice alternative to the more common Carson, Karsten with a T. Uh, Here are some unique names that are not in the top 50, which you might want to use. Finn, F-I-N-N or F-Y-N-N, that can be used for either gender, it's gender neutral. Lauren, I actually know both a man and a woman with this name. Corbin, 
Lawson or Dawson, or any of the L-Y-N names for girls like Oakland, which I think is pretty. I also like Ryan for a girl. Hmm. Or if you want to go old school, like Billy Shakespeare, Rosalind. And I think Byron is adorbs for a boy. Yeah. So <laughs> you don't like Byron? I don't. Like Lord Byron or Ada Byron? I don't, Byron. Bye, Byron. Good luck, Jessica. Anyway, Jessica, of course, name invented by Shakespeare. I hope you find your perfect name. Write us and let us know what you've chosen when the little one is born. All right. Next letter. Dear Jennifer and Mallory, I don't know if I'm having a boy or girl yet, but I was wondering if there is a rule about having a first name ending with a vowel and the middle name starting with a vowel. Example would be Deandra Adrina. Does that sound totally wrong? There aren't names I'm choosing yet, just out of curiosity. Thanks, Sabrina F. Well, first of all, people aren't going to be calling your child by their first and middle name unless you plan on doing that and calling them by both names. But rarely does anyone else. Nobody goes around calling me Jennifer Ann. You know, in the case of the example you submitted, Deandra Audrina, there's definitely a glottal stop between those two vowels, and they're completely different sounds, a uh and aw. Uh. So it would be Deandra Audrina. Now, I usually say if the last sound of the first name is the same as the first sound of the last name, it might be confusing. Take, for example, Nate Tarragon. Is it Nate Aragon or Nay Tarragon, and that was Nate Tarragon. So it's hard to say that because they end and start with the same sound. As far as vowels go, there's usually the glottal stop, even if they are the same sound, like Amelia Underwood. So you're putting that glottal stop in there, and they're both uh sounds, Amelia Underwood. So that doesn't really create an issue. So let's go back to consonants like John Nash. Is it John Nash or John Ash? Bill Ledger. I guess you can elongate the consonant like Bill Ledger, Bill Ledger, or Knee Vector. That's a harder one. Is it Knee Vector or Knee Vector? So I don't know. I guess it all depends on the consonant. But the point is, say it out loud, use our introduction test, as we call it. Say, hi, my name is Amelia Underwood, or hi, my name is Neve Vector, and see how it sounds to your ear, your partner's ear, and your friends. I would like to point out that although there are many reasons for not using certain naming conventions, there are no rules. That's true. Consider all ideas, then go with your heart. That's what baby naming is all about. I love that. And on that note, thanks for joining us. And again, if you have any feedback about this or any other episode, write us at podcast at babynames.com. And don't forget to come back to the website. We have a lot of cool features for you, even if you're not expecting and you just love names. That's right. Well, thanks so much, Jen. Love you and love our older sisters, Kate and Sue. We do, and we love our listeners. And tune in next time when we go over names from horror. Ah! Make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.